this video is going to explain to you three very important things. First of all, what the metabolic heart can measure. Secondly, how temperature and pressure affect that measurement. And lastly, how the cart calculates oxygen consumption based on the difference between inspired and expired air. So what does the cart measure? It measures three things. The first one is it measures the volume of air that somebody is breathing out. So the mouthpiece traps all the air and it goes through this device called the pneumatac. Secondly, it measures oxygen and carbon dioxide in that air. So it has a little sampling line at the back. It takes a sample of the air. Okay? And then the sensors inside the cart can measure what percentage of that air is oxygen and what percentage is carbon dioxide. So what we talked about was expired air coming out of the body into the cart. Now the air we breathe in is room air or inspired air. What we need to know about inspired air is it has three ingredients. Okay. Nitrogen, which makes up about 79%. So the majority of the air, but nitrogen is not used in metabolism. Oxygen, which in room air, makes up about 21%. And lastly, CO2, which in room air is only a very, very small amount. So in fact, not even a percent. So as you can see, the number is much smaller. Now, each of these is called a partial pressure because if we know the pressure of the entire room and you add up these constituents, it will equal the total pressure. For example, in the room right now, we have a weather station and it tells us the pressure is 740. So let's assume that this circle is a pressure of 740. But what would happen if we increase the pressure? So for example, if we went to sea level, decrease our altitude, there'd be more atmosphere above us, and the pressure would increase. So if this was the, the amount of air, the volume of air, at 740 millimeters of mercury pressure, well if we went to 760, what we see is the circle would get smaller. It would be being compressed. But when that happens, these numbers stay the same. So again, if we add these up, they're going to equal to 100%. And that's important. Because when we look at expired air, which is measured by the metabolic cart, we find the same thing. Okay, there's a percentage, but that percentage doesn't change. The volume will increase or decrease with temperature or pressure. So how does temperature affect volume? Well, higher temperatures allow the gas to expand, so the volume increases. Colder temperatures cause the gas to contract, so the volume decreases. If we can measure these in the metabolic cart, then we can compare our inspired to our exhaled air. So now we know what the cart measures, and we understand the relationship of temperature and pressure to volume, and we can see what the constituents are. So the last thing that the cart measures is ventilation. Now how it does that is through this little equation here. Now when I give you a problem, I'm always going to give you the actual ventilation but you must understand where that comes from. So, ventilation is expressed in liters per minute. And to figure that out, the metabolic cart counts each breath, so the number of breaths in any given minute, and it multiplies it by the tidal volume, which is the volume of each breath. Again, the cart can measure this. 
So when you multiply the two together, you get an expired volume. So V expired. And that air is composed of these three gases. Nitrogen expired, oxygen expired, CO2 expired. Now what we'll see is that when you breathe out, the oxygen and the carbon dioxide work with your metabolism. So oxygen goes down, CO2 goes up, and nitrogen stays more or less the same. Now how do you calculate, for example, the volume of oxygen consumed? Because it's very important to understand metabolism. Well, the simplest way to understand it is you take inspired air, or the amount of oxygen, you subtract the expired amount. Now, because temperature and pressure and all these numbers are changing, it isn't quite that simple. The math gets a little bit larger. So the equation is volume expired air, which the metabolic part measured, multiplied by the percentage of oxygen, subtracted by volume expired times the percentage of oxygen. Sorry, my correction, volume inspired. Now, these values are not measured by the carbon because the volume of air you breathe in just comes into the mouthpiece. The volume of air you go out is measured. But luckily we can rearrange the variables a bit and figure it out. So the equation where we end up with is called this. VO2 is going to equal to the volume of expired air multiplied by the percentage of nitrogen expired divided by the percentage of nitrogen inspired multiplied by the percentage of oxygen inspired Tracks inside the percentage of oxygen expires. So it's a complicated formula. It will always be given to you. You don't have to memorize it. But you do have to understand how to put the numbers in. So when the metabolic part has a print off, it might only give us the raw numbers, which are these. So how do we go about inserting them in here? This is how. Let's assume that the metabolic part gives us this information. Oxygen expired equals to 0 0.1614, which is 16.14%. But we must put it into a decibel form. Now it gives us CO2 expired. And let's assume that that is 0. 0.0453. So 4%. And we can see that's a huge increase from what we were breathing in. When we're breathing in, there's almost no CO2. By the time we're breathing out, there's 4%. Okay? And our oxygen has gone from 20% down to 16%, and that is the volume we're trying to measure. Now, what about nitrogen? We don't have that number, but we can calculate it by going 1 minus these two together. So the volume of oxygen, so in this case, 0 0.1614 plus 0 0.0453. And why is that possible? Because if we add them all together, they're always going to equal to 1. Okay? 
So now we have nitrogen expired. We have nitrogen inspired. We have oxygen inspired. And we have oxygen expired. And we need to get ventilation. So how do we get ventilation? Well, again, we look at our metabolic part. And we can see that when these were the concentrations, the ventilation was 50.92 liters per minute. Again, it can get more complicated where you have to calculate this. But for the purposes of this class, I will give you that number. At this point, we just have to insert all of those into the equation and get our value. Now, the final value we get will be in liters per minute because all of these are just decimals. There's no units here. So let's insert these into the problem, and that gives you something to practice with. So VO2 is therefore equal to 50.92 liters per minute. Percentage of nitrogen expired. So that was 0, sorry, 1 minus 0 0.1614 plus 0 0.0453 divided by nitrogen inspired, which is always the same, so 0 0.7904. Once you complete that operation, you multiply it by oxygen inspired. So we look on the inspired side, that's 0 0.209. Close the brackets, subtract oxygen expired from here, 0 0.1614. Close brackets. When you crunch all those numbers, you determine that the oxygen consumption is 2.48 liters per minute. So that's 2.48 liters per minute. Now you must follow the order of operations for this to work. There's a lot of numbers to juggle here, a lot of decimal places, but that is how you calculate oxygen consumption. The final factor that can affect these numbers, which is not something I expect you to calculate, but you must understand, is that ventilation has to be expressed in what we call STP. So our oxygen consumption is also then STPD. STPD stands for standard temperature and pressure dry. Because all of those things can affect the volume of the air. Now when the air comes out of our body, it's actually in what we call Yes, which is body, temperature, pressure, saturated. And once that air settles in the room, it's at ATPS, which is atmospheric, temperature, pressure, saturated. So it's important for your sake that you look and make sure you see STPD along with the volume expired. If it's not STPD, then you have to convert these two into STPD, which we're not going to cover right now, but it's in your textbook, uh, and it's something that you can learn on your own if you ever need to.